Thank you. Thank you. Henry, what are we even talking about on this show? Man, I have no idea. We're just going to make it up as we go along. Just another day at PB. Hello, internet. We are back for another episode, our third episode of the Pink Bike Weekly Magazine Show. Now, Michael Levy got stopped at the Canadian border with what he swore was potpourri. But needless to say, he's not on this week's show. And instead, we are joined by PB new boy, Dario. Dario, thank you for coming on the show. Hello, everybody. Do you like your journalism, you know, slightly ill-informed and hot takes fired from the hip? Absolutely. <laughs> You're going to fit right in. So we're going to get straight into the most interesting, at least the things that we think are most interesting from this week's kind of another content tsunami on the website of it coming from all directions. But Dario, you know a bit about bikes. What is going on with this classified hub? Talk me through it. Uh, we've got the Hammerschmidt hub coming in from classified. Yeah, so it's before we even go into this, explain what the Hammerschmidt was. Hammerschmidt was work. something SRAM made 10 or 12 years ago now. Uh, it was an internally planetary geared crankset. It allowed for you to have effectively two front chain rings, but with only one effective chain ring. So removing a derailleur from the system, it was really draggy, really heavy. A cool concept, but ultimately didn't work all that well. I think relative to like current drivetrains. And now Classified has kind of condensed that system, put it in the rear hub, and given it an electronic shifter. So yeah, so you basically you still run a, what is it, a 12-speed short cage system? Yeah, a proprietary 12-speed cassette that they make. Yes, so it's basically kind of smaller shifts in between gears, and then you have a Bluetooth-operated sort of axle assembly, which you could then flick through and the weight isn't that high i mean i think that it might put some people off in regards to you know quite a lot of unsprung mass it's got a lot of the sort of the gearbox crowd might not be quite into it but i think for but some it's people not, it's not as extreme as like a roll-off hub or anything like that no i think it's it's 2100 grams for a their like model wheel set so that's including the internally shifting element in the rear hub as well as spokes rims all that which isn't too bad but do you think that it is i think sometimes you know with gearbox bikes they have to be extreme enough to satisfy the extreme audience i think sometimes the halfway houses can suffer by being neither extreme enough nor mainstream enough and i thought drivetrains were sold forever from two weeks ago when we got the new sram i thought the the drivetrain wars were over i thought it was about making peace they might have had like an uh what we call like an unfortunate release date <laughs> like given that i, I think I think this is actually really cool. I think it's cool as well. I give it shit. I but struggle it's cool. a bit with the proprietary uh, cassette situation just yeah. because it's going to be like hard to find aftermarket parts for potentially. Not to mention the fact that it would just be easier if they used like say the XD driver or something like that. Because then you could couple this with transmission or with like Link Glide or something Think like that. Think of the that. possibilities. Think of the possibilities. Allegedly, you can shift this under load. We'll see what tests okay. yeah, a thousand bring watts. out. I don't think I've ever produced a thousand watts in my life, but I have performed bad shifts. But you can now do that while shifting. On essentially like a front derailleur level of shift. Right. And that type of seismic change. Yeah. It's impressive. I mean, I don't profess to know a ton about how this system works. Like we haven't seen the internals yet, but historically planetary gears don't shift well under load. If you look at like the pinion system or roll off, like any of those are meant you like make a shift while coasting and then you can immediately pedal. Yeah. The beauty of which is you can shift while you're not pedaling. I don't know how that works in this. Yeah, way. well, it'd be interesting to see how it plays out. Now, something else which is interesting, which kind of might satisfy that hmm, slightly more discerning mountain bike customer, is the new Air Shock from EXT, which has a lot of the features of the Coil Shock, but now with a, a, well, a three chamber air system, a three chambered heart. Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, so they're they're kind of implementing the dual positive air chamber system that they use in their forks we also see like olin's using that in their forks uh manitou does that as well i mean it can be really good like i've got some of those olin's forks i've got some of the downhill ones i've ridden them a lot on the trail bike as well and they are very good the, the problem that can be with a system like this is that the pressure in the main so oftentimes roughly speaking the pressure in that ramp up chamber can be suggested to be double of what it is in the main chamber right and then you, your rain your, it only activates once you hit a threshold and the main chamber pressure is such where it equalizes and then drives the second chamber, which means that people looking for more ramp up keep putting more pressure in their ramp up chamber, but actually it means it then doesn't reach the threshold, so it actually is activated later in the stroke. 
it can be a very good system. Yeah. But I think for a lot of people, it's quite complicated. So I think that interesting to see how it shakes out with different linkages and stuff. But that hydraulic bottom out's very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They do make very good stuff. And let's face it, if someone's going to get it pretty good, it's, it's probably going to be EXT. And last on the list, we have the Cannondale Habit, which I read in the press release. I mean, I say I read. When you wrote it. I did. I wrote the press release. Oh my God, it's all coming apart. Like, I'm actually paying someone to like moonlight for me. And that's why my writing's so bad, can I just say? Uh, well, I read and then wrote in the press release, um, you know, can the Habit is Cannondale's most popular bike. Is that including road and gravel I and stuff? The, the, the mountain bike. Mountain bike. Yeah. But which, I, I believe it. Which I, I mean, was like, well, it shocked me. And then I thought, well, actually, no, because... They only make... You only make like a two... Few. Or, yeah, yeah they three. Got the Jekyll, the Habit, the Scalpel. I'm sure I'm forgetting some, but like... But no, it looks really cool. I mean, it's got lots of adjustability. They do the long travel version, the short travel version. Mm -hmm. um, which is a 10 mil difference. 10 mil difference. 130 to 140. And also what's actually interesting is it's basically... The same frame, same eye to eye, same shock, but just with a different limiting spacer in there. Right. So you could, should you want to, convert between the two. Um, looks pretty cool though. I mean, they kind of, it's nice. They put a refreshing sort of thing on like, I don't know. I mean, it's it's refreshing. Obviously, everything's a everything's an angle, but they talk about wanting it to be easy to work on. Simple. Yeah. Like no through the headset cable routing, relatively clean lines. An unfortunate thing that that's like, whoa, like what a revolutionary thought. But no, it is cool. <laughs> yeah, it's you're right. Uh, like, and... I think for Cannondale, who's a brand that like a lot of people have maligned as being like proprietary that's and true, fussy yeah. historically, it's cool that they're doing something that's like ubiquitously easy to work on, at least according to how it looks so far. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I, I had uh, Jekyllin for test for a while and I found that to be a really easy bike to get along with. It wasn't like the shock is in kind of a funky chamber. So like getting to some of the the dials is a little tricky, but otherwise... It works well. Yeah, it's funny. Hey, like, I think um, Cannondale brand that prides themselves on being quite cool. The coolest thing they ever did was that downhill bike, and they canned it anyway. But hey-ho, you live and you learn. Either way, it's, someone to wel it's time to welcome someone who is pretty cool onto the show. It's our very, very cool, very, very nice producer, master person, Mr. Max Barron. <laughs> I did, when I said master, I was like, how am I going to finish this word? <laughs> so much master fun. video guy. Let's welcome onto the show with a warm round of applause. <laughs> Yeah. And we just oh, and the mic goes down. Make him feel welcome. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, me welcome too. Yeah. This week for the Pink Bike Consulting Firm, the place where we basically we basically fix the bike industry. We're going to talk about parts reliability and why our bikes keep breaking, but Max's doesn't. Now, Max, you're a multiple, I believe, national BMX champion, right? Nope. How old are you? <laughs> How old am I? How old were you? Like twelve. And you competed when you were twenty-eight in the under twelve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, under twelve, I was twenty-eight. National yeah. champion. That's a lot more than I've ever done. Yeah. Well. Hey. And so we always joke around, like you know, my bike always breaks. Your bike never does. Talk us through what bike do you ride, and how did you end up at this setup? Yeah. So I've got a raw Madonna. Um, I got it through Ruben, who owns Raw. He lived in Squamish last year and he moved away. So I actually bought his personal bike off him. Uh, it was a complete. And then I parted out a lot of the parts I didn't want, put on some new ones, and just kind of went for a reliability build. What, what have you put more patience towards, your bike build or working with me and Levy? Mm, yeah, you and, Le yeah, yeah. You and Levy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need a bike that works because if you've got to work with us between nine and five and then go home to a broken bike, it's that just, is just yeah. going to end up through the window. Yeah, Dario, you ride a lot. You're based in Bellingham. Yeah. You know, you do a shit ton of miles. What's the part that you're always surprised doesn't last as long as it does? Uh, surprise doesn't last as you long know as what it I mean. does. <laughs> what what wears out quicker mean? than I expected to? Yeah. yeah well, um, thank you. <laughs> Shimano clutches go really quickly in Bellingham because it's mm. so wet. I yes. think they just get inclusion and they're like rusted out in a couple of weeks. Um, I think maybe a little more special grease would help with that. Yes. Um, tires never wear out there, which is nice. Mm -hmm. It's just too slippery. Uh, drivetrains generally, I think it's really gritty. We have like yes. that nice sandy loamy soil. And so it just gets in there and destroys things. But it's funny, hey, like how, li you know, we talked, we joked earlier on about that classified hub and how mm. little <laughs> what we can put out, like I put out anyway. I always find it, it's funny that like, you think of a drivetrain of like a car or an airplane, which is obviously super fucking heavy. Sure. 
it lasts and I with my little puny little legs can wear at a drivetrain and that's right. kind of like a I mean, yeah. damning indictment you know <laughs> this is true the yeah thing- you think of like a like a boat engine is sitting in salt water but yeah. you know sealed at least because they don't care about the weight yeah. you're just yeah. like chipping the barnacles off a hull right and it's just lasting and then you 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 wash your bike and, and it's it doesn't done last. yeah so for you, Max, coming to this bike, and I think you've kind of been a fan of alloy bikes for a while. You want to comment yeah. before we? I've only ever had one carbon bike. Oh, really? And what? it was the bike I had for the least amount of time. Did it break? No. Nope. No, you just I got just, rid. I didn't love it and mm. swapped it out. So, so, yeah. Do you, is it, is alloy a must have for you? Or no. Do you, no, you don't no. care. I just, um, it's usually a price thing. Like, mm. I'm not dropping crazy money on a bike. Frame material, I'm just like, I, you don't know. I'd rather put that money into brakes and, wheels and tires and all that I stuff feel the same way yeah, yeah. because yeah. How, how much does your bike weigh please um, tell me tell me about tell the viewers about the stump jumper so yeah i ride my personal bike is a specialized stump jumper evo alloy a trail bike 140 mil uh i have a cascade link on it so <laughs> oh, mine's okay. 100 and, it's 158 mil in the oh, rear oh cool wow which it's like 150 stock 158 mm-hmm. with that I have a Lyric on it. It weighs 41 pounds. 41 pounds. That's some damn fine work. Yeah, that makes that me feel good. That is some damn fine yeah. work. I don't know how. That's, That's the thing. I've like, I've like, tr- I mean, I haven't put any effort into like reducing that weight. I'm running like downhill tires or double down, depending. I have like a relatively light wheel set on it right now, which like brought it down to 39. What have you got in your swap box? Oh, it's just full of lead. I put like a lead <laughs> plug in there. No, honestly, that's that's the weight of it with nothing in the swap box. But so um, we, we talk about bikes and, you know, I think there's some areas which have improved reliability so much in the last couple of years. You know, carbon yeah. wheels, I think, are actually can now, you know, you're not I would argue digging like into... More, they're like more durable. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I would and argue And you get so lifetime too. warranty with some of them. Yes. Like, yeah. it just, I've, that's the one thing. I don't break a lot in parts. Mm-hmm. I break wheels. Mm-hmm. I break rear wheels. And yeah. I've spent... Answers? No, no, no. Okay. Um, I've spent more money on replacing rear wheels than it would have cost for a lifetime warranty yes. carbon wheel, right? <laughs> yeah. So now I just bought the carbon wheels. And Especially when you factor in labor and stuff for someone's got well, to build exactly. it for you. And they're stiffer. They're just, I don't know. It's yeah. just I mean, for nicer. me, it's just the not having a true yeah, every week exactly. thing. Mm-hmm. Like I have a test bike in with like EX 1700s, which are great aluminum wheels, but I've had to trim twice in like the month I've had. Mm. Like, which is just more than I would ever think. Of, uh, so carbon wheels. I kind of talked us up a bit, though. We're going to fix the bike industry. Oh yeah. What's the one place we need to make bikes more reliable? People want answers. I can give my two cents. My favorite thing about the raw, one of my favorite things is how well se- sealed the bearings are in the mm-hmm. pivots. Yes, that's good. I don't even. I don't wash the bike very much. Like all, it'll be filthy, muddy put it in the in my garage for like a week or two come out and it's just buttery smooth there's not you're not like you know how some frames you like you, crack into yeah, it you gotta, <laughs> yeah yeah i've just i, I just it's decided like a to get stick. used to the yeah. cracking into it yeah, feeling like and so stick. i never have to change my bearings. every time i test the rod it never happens and you because you only yeah. ride in the rain as well pretty well i mean i live in squamish <laughs> <laughs> so frame bearings so i think it's actually really true because once you start overlies overlizing or wearing the place your bearings are housed you swap them out yeah the, it can you know be a bigger problem Darry. how are you going to fix the bike industry that's a good one i mean in the way i look at it like our bikes are really similar like coil shock big fork reliable brakes drivetrain all that but the main difference is just like the base frame itself like mm-hmm. the raw bikes have like done a really good job of sealing all the bearings they're big pretty easy to replace on my specialized that's not so much the case um otherwise i think like hubs are a point where Oh man, a lot of problems seem to happen. Uh, I like I don't want to like complain because I think relative to like old cup and cone hubs, it's amazing. Yes. But there's room for improvement for sure. Yeah. Like the wheel set I'm running on my bike currently uses like old I forget, I can't pronounce it, like Hugue, like the the like original DT Swiss patent hubs mm-hmm. because they just can't have problems. Like yeah. the two springs with the ratchets, like nothing really goes wrong. You can like get dirt in there and it doesn't care. Yes. Or I've like cracked axles and hydro hubs and like had weird Paul issues with some things like that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say I'm particularly hard on wheels, but OE free hubs, I just get, I can never get the play out. They, yeah. It's in there forever and that's just annoying. I think that whether we talk about it a lot, if Link Glide does prove to be as good as they say, for me, yeah. like there's no reason a human being should wear out a drivetrain quickly in like a season in a season yeah. i will say i'm running like that on that bike and, and it's been pretty superb good. so yeah. far I and mean, yeah. i think as well like i think when people come into a bike shop they want their bike to be fixed most of the time they just want the brakes to work and the truck gears to work yeah. and when the gears are just yeah. like absolutely That's railed the worst. it is so tedious yeah when you can't get it fixed yeah 
And you're just like, just expectation mm. management. You want them to work? <laughs> yeah, no. No, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, but actually, Darry, we've got you here. Mm -hmm. You've got some almost as stupid opinions as I have. <laughs> so we're going to now take it in turn as a, as a way I to mean, sort this of... is a perfect segue. <laughs> you're talking about how gears are fussy and problematic, <laughs> which is why I'm here to say that everyone should just be running GX11 speed. GX11 speed. So we're going to put you in the stand. You think the GX11 speed is the what? Some kind of pinnacle. I don't of think it's like the, like the perfect paragon of, of excellent shifting quality, mm. but I think it lasts a very long time. Do you know what I liked about the GX11 speed? In fact, a lot of the early SRAM stuff, 11 speed, which is mainly like 10 years ago. Now, yeah. I like the fact that it's light, it would so you just can go, throw it away really easily. Well, it would throw away itself. I liked how they would unwind and just be like, I'll see you later. <laughs> like, that, they, they would know a rock's coming down the road and they'd be like, I am I'm out of this. <laughs> it's just like jumping out of a moving car. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've had few issues with it, frankly. Like I, I use the X01 shifter, which is just like a little crisper. Mm -hmm. The derailleur clutch doesn't work right out of the box. <laughs> Which means it can never break. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay that's it's fair. also like the cage is quite small relative to like current 12 speed stuff. So you're not hitting it as much. If you use like one of the E13 cassettes that has mm. a wider range, you yeah. get like all the effective climbing gears you need, you know, mm. like a 32 chain ring or something. Arguably like that with the classified hub. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Dream. You could run there like super cool, lightweight, like SRAM made like their sexiest cassette like six years ago or whatever it was like that pg 1195 it's like all one piece of steel it's really light it's really small it looks nice if you could mount that to one of those cool yes. internally geared hubs you've got a really light wheel weight relative to like transmission or something like that mm -hmm. and it shifts fine so do you have gx 11 speed on any of your bikes i do yeah. you do and yeah. the ones that you ride regularly or in the museum? Yeah, yeah. no, I ride regularly. I mean, um, it's, it's fun. I don't want to bag on it. I mean, for me, before the fact I put Link Glide on my stump jumper, that's what was on there. Yeah, it's not that it's it's not that it's eleven speed or anything like that. That I'm Blanche can actually explain. I think the XT eleven speed was so superior to the GX Probably. eleven speed. It's just like the ubiquity of like free or cheap GX derailers is kind of the <laughs> selling point for me. <laughs> yeah. um, they're just there, yeah, and, and also just, I do think yeah, the like I respect it too. I think the like. The like non-functioning clutch right out of the bat thing is critical to this. Where mm. like you do have to take care of parts of the XT derailers mm -hmm. in order for them to continue to work really well. But the GX is just like just good there. I mean, it's yeah. it's it, yeah. it poor to fair. It's good. <laughs> but like I had I had like a that drivetrain on a bike, living in a drier place, admittedly, but like mm -hmm. running consistently for like four years. Then I rode the Colorado Trail on it. And then I had it on my personal trail bike. And it's still... It's still fine. Okay, you're actually kind of winning me over. Max, yeah. why aren't you putting an 11-speed Jex on your bike? Or are you gonna? No. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna swap over the free up bodies. Yeah. Because I'm on Shimano. You're on Shimano, Shimano yeah, boy. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, I think you're right. I mean, I think that of all the places to spend money on a bike, for me, the drivetrain's probably the one area I don't really care about so much. It's like, good, get it good enough. Yeah, get it good enough. Yeah. Good brakes, good forks, yeah. good shock. Brake, yeah. You know, yeah. but yeah. actually... As long as it's not like ghost shifting when I'm on a descent, that's like the one time I'm upset. Mm. And I don't think, like, the beauty of 11 speed is you can like barrel adjust quite a bit before it starts to like skip. Mm. So it's got like a wider range of bad. I do know. Damn it, you're actually quite convincing. Run that. Yeah. Like it, Come on, yeah. you're in the stand next. And if you run it with a 12 speed chain, uh, it has better mud clearance. Oh my God. Okay. Infinitesimal. He is innocent. <laughs> innocent of all charges. <laughs> yeah. He is. You're running back to Bellingham tonight. He's free. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, um, wow. Nice work. So let's all just get on. That said. Oh, uh, yeah. Go on. The new transmission is really good. So the I'm new not going to like. Say, wait a minute. You've got the SRAM T-type transmission. On, the, on your bike. On a Yeti, yeah. Oh, just like a champagne socialist kind yeah. of thing. Like, everyone should be on 11 speed basic entry level. My drivetrain? Yeah, it costs $2,000. Yeah. <laughs> if I didn't have access to test parts, I would be running the 11 speed. I bet you yeah. drive a Prius, but only performatively. I drive a Volvo. <laughs> performatively. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Right, well, get in the comments. Why or why Please isn't be the 11 speed drivetrain? the solution to all mm. our else. I mean, it seems like Shimano agrees with you because agrees they're going back to it. Yeah, no, that's kind of my, yeah. like, I think that's a point in my case. I mean, there's is like wider range and like uses a, a big derailleur, mm. which is unfortunate. Like the, one of the beauties of older 11 speed was like how little the derailleurs Actually, were. 
how like agile I have the trail is. Friends who run like Z10 speed, which is cool and yes. impressive, like physically, but it's just not enough. I don't See, think. Do you know how we solve drivetrain clearance issues? Bigger wheels. Just get it higher. <laughs> 36s, <laughs> they're just going to be skimming over the top of everything, baby. That's then right. you can go longer cages and then you go bigger wheels again. Yeah. It's cyclical. It's how, it's how the bike industry works. I will say I'm also running those super short Hope Cranks and I no longer <laughs> am bending pedals oh, because okay. I just don't hit them on anything. Yeah, earlier on when you said you kept bending pedals, I was like, hmm, seems like it's not just the pedals' fault. <laughs> no, it's certainly not. It's me, but uh, yeah. Well, amazing, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll catch us next time. Pray for Levy. He's somewhere in Imports Prison. Yeah, he'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> Just thinking. Is it good there? Do you like that? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see him? <laughs> <laughs> cool.